Your relationships are trash. There was something so, good about it. Welcome back to our show, first of all. Oh, yeah. So your question is, your a formal question. I heard everything you said and I was trying yeah. to let you... My question is, why do we talk about the negative things our partners have done to us? I think that we talk about the negative things our partners have done to us because depending on where we're at when we start talking to people about those things, <coughs> it may or may not suggest that we need to we need to deal with them. We need to deal with those things first. Because I could justify sitting here talking about bad experiences in old relationships, but the truth is the way I see it, it is a waste of time. It's a waste of time and it's like take your points against a new relationship because because we did the work to read this shit. That's really why I feel like that prior to me reading. I wouldn't have knew how to answer this, but yeah, I think it's cool to get background, but like I think that after some point it really just need to be on a need to know basis, like especially in the exploring part. Yeah, you you should know this. You should want to know that type of stuff if you getting with a new person just to give you a a background on who this person is but after a while it's like let's let that go before because it's just like a child like a child that turned 36 has been an adult the same amount of time that they was a child mm -hmm. so which one is more important you determine i don't feel like it's something that has to like like you have to every week pin into that person but i feel like part of getting like you said that background part of getting that background kind of is like a it's like a, a little little road map because sometimes a person is only the way that they are because of the bad experience that they had in that relationship. So if a person isn't open and direct, like, hey, I'm used to getting my head knocked between a washer and a dryer. Yeah. And, and you don't know that. And they say, well, I have a problem with this or I have trauma with that. Because they, like, you have to know those things because you could trigger some shit in somebody not knowing. But I think the healthy part of it, if we're talking about two Let's just say we're talking about an optimal situation, not a situation where things can go right. Just optimal, like where you want to be if you're going to do it. The, and when you're at a point that shit can trigger you, you're not really ready to date again. And I say that having been a person that has had shit that could trigger me while I was in a new relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I didn't know what I know now. But yeah, it, it, because it ain't fair. It makes you have to slow down to speed up. Yeah. Like, you might be in a relationship with your life, but. I think that a person can fuck up the relationship with their life if they keep on holding on too much to the wrong direction of it. Yeah. As opposed to dealing with it, like when they talk about experiencing emotions and all that in the books I read, the, the practice is basically that whatever is hitting you or affecting you, if you can visualize yourself as something other than if this ain't doing it for you, you imagine that thing that's hurting you hitting you and you don't run from it, you don't try to pack it away, you feel your heart rate, inc heart rate increase, you feel your heart rate decelerate, mm -hmm. you deal with it, you move on from it, and then you... Sh the, the book tells you that you will see that life is more ex pleasurable after treating life like that. I've done it, so I can agree with it. Mm -hmm. But people that want to talk about how it don't work and they never did, it's just talking. Shut up. Yeah. You can't talk about how to move past... Like, you can't... You can't tell a person they don't understand if they do, but you don't understand because they do. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I no, hope that wasn't makes, complicated. No, no, it makes sense. I know what you're saying. So ultimately, we talking about happy relationships is the, is the goal. Like, staying in the families that we created, that needs to start with healthy people. That don't need to start with people that's going to be healthy. Right. Yeah. I just want to say, too, that I ain't doing no special effects with the camera, so if it die, it die. Mm. We just gonna hit the little TV went off effect, and that's gonna be the end of this episode, wherever it might land. Anyway, <laughs> that way I ain't gotta be trying to navigate the camera, and mm -hmm. I can do what I said I was gonna do. Yeah. Got my book. Mm. See if I can read it. So I read this article, and it was just basically. Okay, so the, I think on the cover of the Men of the Psychology Today mm -hmm. magazine, it's like the topic is men's psyche. Mm -hmm. So, um, it opened up talking about basically how it was normal and how we all know that men struggle with their emotions. And, and as a reader, I was just looking like, I don't feel like that. 
Like, I don't feel like that. I know what I'm doing when I do it. I practice being aware. I practice feeling how I feel. So, mm -hmm. you know, I felt some type of way about them basically making it a thing where they stating that the majority of men don't know what, what they feel, and that ain't true. Mm -hmm. And because then they go on to say something about recognizing, owning, and vi verbalizing your feelings. I can do that. So I couldn't relate to that, but I get it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was talking about how men are like it's perpetuating the idea that men are always emotionally unavailable and again as a man that know how to use my mouth to communicate I, I'm calling cap on that stop saying that it's just men that's, stop trying to paint the picture like it's men that's always emotionally unavailable it's not just men it's women too but they get the it's like I feel like in that specific area of emotional availability women get to sit there and hide their fucking hand they don't be available either but niggas just I don't know, it's easy to wait it's easy to point out when we unavailable. But because our needs are different from man to woman. So as a woman feel like she needs time, it's easy for her to see when she's not getting time from her man. Mm -hmm. But then that same unavailability reflects when a man might want his time to play NBA 2K and he then he don't get it. It's mm -hmm. the same need. But we get took to the altar because ours requires us to be active in what we require requires women to shut the fuck up, sit down, and take a little passive role. Well, one requires a self, and the other one requires a team. Because playing the game is something you're doing with yourself. That's your personal time. If a person is like, I need some time, I need some attention, you know, you don't see me, hello. That's more like I want us to spend time together. So I feel like that's a little different. It is different, but it still needs. If, if they get to say, and not you... If they get to say that men are emotionally unavailable, then I get to say that when a man requires his solitude or his alone time and a woman is having a problem with that, mm -hmm. she is exhibiting her unavailability because she's not helping him foster his emotions. Yeah. Because what non-gamers don't know is that I could be sitting there playing the most complex game in the world and I'm getting so much thought done about my relationship because I'm being left alone to think inside. See, just because people see your hands moving, they think that you're actively paying attention like to the point that you can't think about nothing else. Right. And if, if any of this shit that I'm saying don't make sense, just look at how many people play games in each community. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, 2K, Madden, goddamn PGA, Racing, Dirt, these are all communities of men that it look like they play a game all day, but that's where you get some of your best thinking done. I can yeah. tell you every song that I wrote in my head while I was playing the game. So what it boils down to is people creating their own personal space and it needs to be respected. Because mm -mm, the personal space was the male requirement for an emotional need to be met. Mm -hmm. Just like the, not, the, the quality time was the female's requirement of an emotional fulfillment. Mm -hmm. It's both fulfillments for the person, but one requires me to be present, the other one requires you to leave me the fuck alone. Why can't, why can't in relationships the man and the woman both have their needs and, and wants met? Like They can, but I'm saying, we started off with what I read, mm -hmm. when they keep trying to say that it's just men that's emotionally unavailable. The problem is, if we let that statement ride and start talking about it, then we don't talk about women being unavailable. Mm -hmm. What does it look like when a woman is emotionally unavailable? What does it look like? I'm asking. No, I, I don't know. What I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I've ever been really emotional. It looks like that way. it looks like things that we feel like we say all the time. We still saying them, and we're happy to say them because they're still not happening. The same shit women say. Like what? Can you give me an example? Um, I'll be, I'll be extreme or dramatic. This nigga don't never buy me a purse, a bag. Okay, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a fulfillment. So mm -hmm. eventually. And, and she's verbalizing this. Eventually, she deserves to feel like, why the fuck won't he get me a purse? I told him that's what I want. It's been 10 years, and he never bought me one purse. <laughs> so we feel the same way when we say, okay, we just want women to shut up sometimes. Every woman going to come and talk to you for three hours about how they shut up when you tell them to shut up, not knowing that they just talked for three hours. When all we needed was one dedicated hour. You know what I'm saying? This is just for example purposes, but... And the talking is really a big ass issue that just like women want to say men are unemotionally available. No, emotionally unavailable. Just like they like to keep saying that. 
If women get to keep saying that, if articles get to post that men are unavailable emotionally, then men get to say women need to shut the fuck up. Why do you think the articles say that? They doing studies. A man wrote the article. Right, but where are they getting studies from? Like, they asking men, do they feel that they are emotionally unavailable well, or why? Okay, well, purpose? they went on because I put a note. So the next thing that I noted was it's called the loss of, oh my God, it's so dark. Re the loss of the relational. And that's called, or that is when you, you've been forced to separate from the feelings of your mother and to become a man a man, and turn away from your father's resources. The thing that I just talked to you about. Mm -hmm. So then it says that most men suffer from normative male alexthemia which discourages the expression of vulnerable emotions mm -hmm. through society boys lose permission to feel and become disconnected mm -hmm. this is all based off of how we're raised so we got people that's complaining about what we are when we were raised to be what we are mm -hmm. and then this person if we if it's a Tyler Perry movie Cause a lot of women say this stupid shit. I'm gonna tell women, man, we gotta keep our show fun. If you're a woman, I'm about to tell you some shit to say right now if you wanna get out your relationship. Don't get mad at me. But go tell your man you don't wanna be like his mama and see how fast he cheat on your stupid ass. Oh man. Just say it. It ain't even gotta have no, just say some dumb shit like that. Yeah. So, everything that I was raised to be is a problem for you. And, and you're acting like you're better than what I came from. That's a pool of problematic motherfucking relationships. That's like what we was talking about earlier, though. Like, in terms of, like, before you hit that oh, exclusively dating phase, if you, like, what you just said, if you're talking to a lady and you're telling her that, you know, this type of life that I want, and she's like, well, where did you get that from? And you're like, well, my mom raised me like this, and I agree with that, and, you know, whatever the situation is. And if she just give you those type of vibes, like, that's beneath me, it shouldn't even make it past. No, there should be no date. It shouldn't be. I don't care if y'all talking it about five months. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It mm shouldn't. -mm. It shouldn't. You don't even like the way I want to be a dad or a, a father or Husband you think my example? If you think if, this is what I want to ask women too, I ain't got to ask you this stuff. I want to ask women, what part of your mind make you think that it's cool to go have a baby with a nigga and then don't expect them to raise the baby like they was raised? Yeah, that's weird as fuck. Whatever that is, if it's positive reinforcement, I think that I think that's great. But like. A Even if it's negative, what makes you think it's going to be different than what it is? If that's what they, you know what I'm saying? The only thing that it could do is if that person was like abused growing up and they said, I don't want that for my life. And that's somebody that wants to change how they parent because they grew up in a fucked up home. But like a person that is just like, this is how I'm going to raise my kids or this is these are my values. It's like, you got to know what a person is fucking um about before you start having kids with them and start being physical you know in that way because everybody is raised differently like you may be fine with like giving your kids formula maybe she like no i want to breastfeed and you like i can't be with no bitch that breastfeed kid like that's gonna always be a problem big or small whether you agree or not it's always going to be a problem being with somebody who don't see the world the way you see it yeah so the question is my question is like you said, you need to know about formula. So, it seems like people just not talking enough before we doing serious shit. Yes. And we blaming everybody because we not talking enough. That's the problem. I agree. That's the problem. And the problem is people not being able to like have those talks without it, people being up in the orbit. Like, let's say we have a talk about, I don't know, I say like, who we ain't been on a date in five months. And that might hit home for you like, man, Women, this and that, this and that, don't talk about that. It's just like, and the people are like, I don't even want to go through all that, even telling my feelings. Yeah. If you're going to like spaz over me just having just a simple conversation, mm -hmm. people don't feel comfortable with talking to their partner. Um, they be like, it's going to be a problem if we talk about that. Yeah. But it becomes a problem later on because you didn't. Right. So, like, if you're telling me a need that you have or a desire, and it for some reason seemed like I'm not fulfilling that, you don't think that causes unhappiness? Yeah. Like, especially if you know that that person loves you and you love them and you like, I, I know this person, know this is what I need and desire and crave and they're not giving it to me, it makes you unhappy. 
and you continue to be unhappy day by day by day by day because it's a, a want, whether it's physical or materialistic, whatever that is for you, it's something that your needs aren't getting met. Same right. way with me. You know? So you said happiness. The next note I got on my paper, it says that, like, you know, I was talking about socialization, basically teach you how to not feel and become disconnected as a man. Mm -hmm. So then it says that that turns into a limited ability to express your full emotional range, which leads to co covert depression. I wrote that down because I feel like, I, f I don't know, but if I had to guess, I would say that the levels of depression for men and women, they probably the same, like close. They ain't just, you know what I'm I don't feel like they just out the water like 95%, 90 on one end and 10 on the other. I don't feel like it's like that. So the fact that you got dudes out here that's the same depressed as women, will their women are more vocal when it comes to depression. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find a woman to tell you she's depressed every day if you go looking hard enough and talk long enough. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that these people in this Psychology Today article are saying that it's actually men walk around with covert dep depression. I think there's more, uh, I think there's, it's worse when men are depressed. I think there's more men depressed than women. And, the, and, and, and what I want to say is that if we talking about from a boy to a man, to a man, we talking about people that was depressed before they made kids. Mm -hmm. So who didn't do their homework? Yeah. The person discovering somebody was depressed or the person knowing they was depressed? Yeah, I, I definitely, for sure, for sure feel that way. Because, and the, the difference too, and it's not that it's either or, but I'm just speaking just from experience. I feel like when men are depressed and they go into a relationship or they're just depressed in that relationship, for one, a lot of them don't feel that they can express that. You know, people think they're crazy or they see a therapist or whatever the situation is. You know, man up, you know, whatever. You know, all the other bullshit that That's crazy. That's part B, because part A is you ain't even got time to think about that. When you're trying to get the money, get the bag, get the car, get the degree, get the girl, get the house, the picket fence, the dog, the good. Mm -hmm. You ain't got time to think about all that. So what happened? I'm starting to think that when you, what they call the middle age crisis is when you finally sit down and think about all the shit that you ain't happy with. And it'd be too late it's by too, then and people think you're crazy. <laughs> it's it's kind of too late, but you still can do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you can stay where you at and you can just like, fuck it, man. I'm going to do something new. Yeah, that too. But yeah, so yeah. And my last two things on my paper, it says joy must be consciously practiced. And it says to love is to feel free. Yeah. That is what I got for my today's reading. Mm -hmm. We got any more closing notes? I think we did pretty good on this session. Yeah, yeah it was good. I hope the volume good. I hope we could be heard. You got anything you want to say? Mind your own goddamn motherfucking business. Alright, that's cool. This YouTube approved. Signing out. <laughs>